Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Chris, thank you for that very warm welcome. I certainly join with many others in acknowledging the activities and efforts of uh, Queensland Airports Limited, its importance across regional Queensland. I'm certainly a, uh, a regular uh, user of your facilities and, uh, and appreciate your ongoing activities. Um, my commiserations, though, that you weren't able to make it into Downlands College Toowoomba. I uh, have a number of acknowledgements, ladies and gentlemen, and I know you've been uh, <clears throat> meeting this morning and I've heard tremendous feedback from the discussions this morning, obviously looking to further discussion over lunch. Uh, so uh, I won't uh, repeat uh, what I suspect have been all of the acknowledgements already, but as Minister for Regional Development, uh, Territories and Local Government, I wanted to particularly uh, acknowledge my uh, local government colleagues. Uh, I mentioned certainly my own mayor and good friend, uh, Paul Antonio, the mayor of Toowoomba Regional Council. Paul was deputy mayor when I was on council with him, uh, so great to be here with you, Paul. Uh, I understand uh, Councillor Peter Mitchell uh, from uh, Redland City Council is here. I haven't caught up with Peter yet. G'day, Peter. How are you? Uh, and uh, my good friend, Karen Williams, the mayor of Redland City Council. Karen and I have worked out recently that uh, <clears throat> uh, some years ago, uh, when my family always went to North Stradbroke Island for holidays, she would have been manning the Dagwood dog stand at the uh, barge there at Cleveland. So uh, great to uh, catch up with you to Karen. Um, uh, I've got a whole range of RDA, Regional Development uh, Australia colleagues in the room as well, so uh, I acknowledge them one and all. Now look, this afternoon it's a great pleasure to uh, address so many people from different sectors across Queensland in relation to our economic development. I think it proves to me that we are all sharing that same goal, to see Queensland grow and prosper, and particularly in my case, a real focus on regional Queensland. Uh, that's where I'm from and that's uh, what I represent uh, alongside regional areas right across the country. And I guess, ladies and gentlemen, my message today uh, is very much from, in our case, regional Queensland to what is an audience here today made up of a whole range of people equally passionate about regional Queensland uh, like I am, uh, but also an audience uh, of a significant number of people from here in Brisbane, the southeast corner of our great state. Uh, so my message is from regional Queensland, and uh, I commence by acknowledging the efforts of CEDA, the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, over so many years. Kyle, almost 60 years as I understand it. So uh, uh, well done, and thank you for... for <laughs> I, I thank you for the, the CEDA for facilitating these sorts of discussions, uh, and uh, you in just recent years. I uh, had the great honour of addressing CEDA uh, some years back as a Queensland's Agriculture Minister, so thank you very much for the opportunity to address you again. Now, in my case, I'm a fourth generation Australian from the Darling Downs. I grew up on a grain farm on the Darling Downs. I was educated, like Chris, at USQ, at Bond University, University of Queensland, and I started my uh, quite enjoyable and successful agribusiness career after that study all those years ago. And I, I have, a, I guess, a little bit of an unusual background for a federal cabinet minister in that I came into politics, first of all, at the local government level, 10 years ago this year in my early 40s. Uh, but during that time, I've had the great honour of representing my community at all three levels of uh, government. Um, so it gives me a bit of a perspective, if, I, if you like, that I can add to the others in relation to the opportunities and challenges that face regional Australia. And I reckon it is a very exciting time to be a Queenslander, a regional Queenslander in particular. Now we all know it's an attractive place to live and work and do business. Uh, I suspect most of us would agree that it's probably the best in Australia for doing, do, doing just that. And I share with you my experience, my perspective from my glorious hometown of Toowoomba in relation to those opportunities. Now, Toowoomba is often raised with me as a bit of an exemplar for the rest of the country. 
It's raised with me as a Toowoomba boy, obviously, but as Minister for Regional Development, Territories and Local Government, it is brought up quite regularly as I travel the country. Uh, the Mayor, Paul Antonio, tells me to tell everyone that it's all his doing, uh, but of course it's the doing of leadership in our city, uh, uh, support in our city from various community organisations uh, and the business sector in particular taking risks uh, in our businesses on behalf of our workers uh, right across the board. And why wouldn't they, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, we have significant partnerships, as I've just mentioned. We have a significant university sector, a uh, skilled workforce, uh, high quality education, good jobs growth, uh, and as I mentioned, leaders with vision, dedication, and that entrepreneurial streak so important for any region of Australia. Then we had the likes of Brisbane pushing 2.5 million people uh, and the increased challenges that provides for some, not, not all, but increased challenges that provides for some in terms of cost of living, congestion and so forth. And I guess uh, for them, uh, there are those opportunities in regional Queensland, whether it's Toowoomba or Mackay, Townsville, Cairns, uh, you name it, out west as well. So in that context, I wanted to particularly give you the message today that the Turnbull government has a plan for a stronger regional Australia. And that's my responsibility as the relevant minister. Now we're focused across the board on stronger local economies and that's what I'll touch on today. Uh, active and engaged communities, whether that's the efforts of my a colleague in terms of rural health, regional communications, that's uh, uh, Senator Bridget McKenzie, the Deputy Leader of the National Party. High quality services in education, health and so forth. Simon Birmingham and I work on regional education initiatives and of course uh, his Assistant Minister Karen Andrews from here in Queensland does the same. And most recently with Michaelia Cash, we've been working on regional uh, employment trials, pushing opportunities, particularly in those regions that need uh, a bit more focus, that have the potential for the future, but have been dealing with challenges. So our plan in relation to these myriad of activities is not just for the next few years, not just for the next year. We're all uh, told the Prime Minister will make a decision by May of next year in terms of the next election. We are talking at least 10 years in our current outlook and we're wanting to continue that focus going forward. And politics aside, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's what local, state and federal government must be doing, taking a long-term view irrespective of the governments of the day. So in relation to CEDA uh, and its interest in economic development, can I just focus on a couple of those points? Uh, the tax relief for working Australians, uh, we have we have already provided such relief. Almost 800,000 people receiving in Queensland alone immediate tax relief of $530 per year. Now the figure doesn't sound much, I know, on an individual basis, but multiply that across the economy. Multiply that across wallets being able to pay for some more bills to uh, pay that car rego, buy groceries, go out with friends. That's as important in regional Australia as it is anywhere else. That is a significant move. The tax burden on business is being lifted, particularly in the small uh, business sector, uh, those, mums and dad, those mum and dad businesses throughout regional Australia that are important to the lifeblood of our regional economies are benefiting. So that tax reform approach is something that, if you, if you just sort of put aside current political debate for just a moment and think about the columns of newspaper print that you've read over the years, the commentariat, the academics, who have said we must deal with proper tax reform in this country. Well, the Turnbull government is doing that. We're embracing it. And we have our, uh, we have our uh, critics, and that's what politics is about, but we are making moves, ladies and gentlemen. We are dealing with that. Uh, importantly, as I said, it impacts on regional Queensland. Now, I'm the father of uh, six uh, great kids and I know that giving them the best chance of, or, or well, giving me the best chance, I should say, of encouraging them to consider careers in regional Australia is only, uh, uh, is only activated if we can ensure there are job opportunities available. Now, the 
uh, opposing uh, political views in relation to our enterprise tax plan um, would prevent those regional opportunities. Youth unemployment in regional Australia is a problem. We need small business, which is the predominant employer, employing more people, hence our focus on that tax reform uh, about which I speak. The second key area I want to talk about is budget reform. Again, the commentary has always been for some years now, must rein in the budget, must pull in government expenditure, must, sure, must ensure we're focused on the areas that support economies, but rein in other government expenditure to let the private sector get going. Well, we've already made $41 billion in budget savings since the last election. This year, for the first year, the federal government, ladies and gentlemen, is not borrowing money for everyday government expenditure for the first time since the global financial crisis. Real spending is now at 2%. That's the best performance in 50 years. So reining in that budget uh, and making it a responsible budget such that we can focus on the areas of community need is what that focus is about. I mentioned more jobs in regional Australia. And you would have heard, again, the commentary in recent times about job creation in our country. Job creation by the private sector, facilitated and supported by government, not job creation by government, but by the private sector. And uh, we are seeing growth now that is the highest on record. Up until a few months ago, it was the highest uh, since I started primary school. But now it is the highest on record jobs growth in the country. In Queensland, regional Queensland, around 130 net, 30,000 net new jobs in the past year alone. Now, this is hard work. Uh, but I think we need to acknowledge what our economy is doing, led by the private sector. Now, my regional development uh, portfolio, I focus very much on private sector job creation activities. $220 million uh, program that uh, I look after across uh, Australia, the regional jobs and investment package, is harnessing projects in those regions which have significant opportunities. Here in Queensland, I talk about the far north from a tourism perspective. I talk about the Wide Bay, Bundaberg and the Wide Bay, despite economic challenges, has so much potential for the future. And already we've created around 11,000 jobs in some of those programs uh, in the last six months that I've been minister. We have the Regional Growth Fund, and I know a lot of my local government colleagues um, are uh, already nodding about uh, that Regional Growth Fund. Um, and Mr Mayor, I'm trying to spend it all in Toowoomba, but apparently I'm not allowed to, and I'm sure Karen wouldn't want me to. Uh, but $272.2 million about fair income transformational regional projects. What we will see there in regional areas is councils joining together for the first time. Tourism, transport hubs, new manufacturing facilities, you name it. Can I touch quickly as well on public service employment opportunities? I firmly believe, as does the Turnbull government, all of my colleagues in the Turnbull government, that regional Australians should have the same opportunity, have the same benefits from public service jobs as do our colleagues who live particularly in Canberra, Central Sydney and Melbourne. So we have a dedicated decentralisation agenda. Just a few months ago I announced the first steps uh, in the budget uh, and to see the beginnings of decentralisation uh, better paying jobs, if you like, into regional Australia, whether it's Albury, Shepparton, Darwin, and I'll be doing more, I think is most exciting and being welcomed in regional communities. And I also wanted to uh, touch on international trade deals. So as we pull together the opportunities for regional Australia, uh, we need to understand that those connections between our trade markets international trade markets uh, and our farmers, for example, our regional manufacturers are in place. Hence the need to focus on proper infrastructure, both communications and transport. Now last month on behalf of Matthias Cormann, the finance minister, I led a delegation overseas, the European Australian business uh, delegation. And they go every year. And I went as regional development minister this time to uh, speak of the opportunities in regional Australia. 
Now, uh, like anyone else in a community representative role, as soon as you jump on a plane to head overseas, it's a junket, it's a holiday, all the rest of it. Uh, and I've had plenty of critique uh, in relation to that. But can I tell you, in Spain, we sat down with the head of Asionia, a company that is part of the consortium building the Toowoomba Second Range Crossing, $1.6 billion project, largest inland road project in Australia. And we talked to him about completion of that project. We talked to him about other opportunities coming off the back of that. He talked to me and our delegation about future investment from their company because they see such excitement across Australia. In Spain, we talked about uh, their desire to tap into our ag tech, our agricultural technology, irrigation, particularly in the horticulture sector. They are seeing Australia as leading the world. They want to uh, uh, deal with us. They want to trade with us. Uh, and the same goes for Portugal and the like. Now, can I just mention very quickly, the European or the EU, uh, the European Union uh, Australia Free Trade Agreement, which is now formally under discussion, uh, the early negotiations are underway, uh, was discussed at length during this trip. Now, why was it uh, significant to me? Why is it significant to regional Queensland, let alone regional Australia? Uh, in the 1950s, 1960s, uh, there was, <clears throat> down at Hamilton here in Brisbane, the old Queensland Butter Marketing Board. Now, irrespective of their structure, that board, that entity, exported butter, exported butter from the Darling Downs, where I'm from, uh, together with uh, other regions from across Queensland, into Europe. Now, Europe is saying to me they want to revisit that opportunity because uh, with the uh, progress now of Brexit, there are opportunities to open up a free trade agreement with Europe, of course, a free trade agreement with the UK at the same time. We're having the opportunity potentially here, ladies and gentlemen, to revisit trade we enjoyed in the middle of last century and we haven't seen it since. They could export butter to Europe, the 1950s and 60s. We can damn well do it in 2018 quicker, more efficiently, I would think, given technology advances in that time. So that's what trade deals are about. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, that infrastructure we need to link these opportunities together is so important across, across uh, regional Australia. Roads of Strategic Importance Program, I could talk about at length where we're trying to complete that last mile or put together those linkages that aren't in place at the moment. Of course, I mentioned the Toowoomba Second Range Crossing. I mentioned inland rail. How many times have you heard over the decades Australia missed the opportunity, the states missed the opportunity, the Commonwealth missed the opportunity to put together a decent uh, standard rail system, uh, in this case, uh, up the eastern seaboard, Melbourne to Brisbane. Well, we're doing it. It's been talked about for decades and decades, uh, generations, in fact, and we are doing it, and I'm looking forward to very significant progress there in the coming years. Uh, exports uh, through the Port of Brisbane, of course, imports uh, into regional Australia as well to help grow our economy. So can I just uh, wrap up uh, on a couple of key points. So much of this, as I've said, is achieved in regional Australia when we have partnerships. I talked about governments working with the private sector. Equally, we need local government, working with state government, working with federal government, irrespective of the politics of the day. And when I move around the nation, that's exactly what I see uh, being demanded, particularly from my local government colleagues. People aren't interested in the blame game. If you want an inland rail uh, and the benefits it will bring across the eastern seaboard or a Toowoomba second range crossing or Bruce Highway upgrades to the north, let alone plans here in urban areas such as in Brisbane, you need three levels of government working together. I touched therefore very briefly on cities deals. Uh, many of you be familiar with the focus on the Townsville city deal, not without its uh, bedding down uh, problems, if you like, but having three levels of government sharing a vision for a city, I think, is a tremendous thing. And together with my local government colleagues, with my regional development Australia colleagues, RDA Australia colleagues, uh, I'll be focusing in the coming months on regions deals as well. Cutting through the politics, cutting through the red tape, and sitting down and looking at specific regions in our country that have tremendous potential, 
but have had challenges, be it economic transition or other impacts, in pulling it together. Uh, in closing, I uh, want to really promote that partnership approach. And just at present, as we think about that, and I encourage you to think about that, certainly across the three levels of government, but most particularly those levels supporting the private sector, I want to mention, uh, as would be familiar to everyone, I'm sure, now, the prevailing drought conditions in regional Australia, particularly regional or western Queensland, western New South Wales. So a few years back, when I was State Agriculture Minister, we were dealing with what we thought was the millennium drought. Well, those conditions continue here in Queensland for many landholders up to seven years. What's different, I guess, this time is that it's spread very significantly into uh, Western uh, New South Wales, Western Australia as well. As the Prime Minister reminds me, in New South Wales, uh, haven't seen conditions like this since 1965, the year I was born. So what are we doing? 1. 6, oh, sorry, 1.3 billion thus far uh, in uh, this prevailing drought from the Commonwealth Government. You may have noticed announcements over the weekend in terms of that farm household allowance. Sticking with farmers, helping them stay on farm uh, through this drought, we'll continue to review how it goes. It's not a, uh, <clears throat> it's not a concession. Uh, it's not a welfare payment, it's backing up uh, a significant part of regional Australia, our regional economy. So those challenges continue and uh, for the rest of this week I'll be uh, working as the Prime Minister is and my colleague, uh, for, uh, Minister for Agriculture, David Littleproud is, throughout regional Australia looking at uh, these significant impacts. So <clears throat> I'm really pleased to be a member of a team uh, doing our darndest to deliver for regional Queensland, regional Australia. We've got to work across the political divide. We've got to work across the political levels to achieve that. We must support the private sector. And certainly our government has a plan for regional Australia, as I've just mentioned. So again, my message to this crowd here today, this group of fine people at uh, this seat of function here in Brisbane. Many of you are from Brisbane in the southeast corner. Please understand that Brisbane, like other significant centres throughout the state, but of course Brisbane is our capital, uh, owes its success, its future opportunities, so much to regional Queensland. You're the gateway to regional, Queen, uh, regional Queensland tourism opportunities, as Chris was saying, and other, spe other speakers have spoken about today. We will stop in the coming weeks to celebrate the ECA, when the bush comes to town. Please understand what that means. It's tremendous, a tremendous, uh, um, <clears throat> if you like, custom for this city, and we've all enjoyed it, but it means that we are supporting the bush, recognising those agricultural pursuits. The wool stores here in Brisbane, on the river, were wool stores. They were there constructed because of agriculture. The Port of Brisbane enjoys a significant part of its traffic, if you like, its freight traffic, uh, down the range from Toowoomba and beyond, from the west where I'm from. Uh, the resource wealth <clears throat> that's been created and is sustained, particularly in this CBD, comes from regional Queensland. And of course, defence opportunities, uh, and I think that may have been touched on today as well, spread across regional Queensland. In my case, the Oki Army Aviation Base, the Kabbalah uh, 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 Warfare, um, electronic warfare intelligence base uh, just north of Toowoomba as well. So we're focused on pulling this together. We're focused, ladies and gentlemen, uh, on getting it done. But there's much more to be done, and I'll continue to work with the same, or my team will certainly will continue to work the same vigour and effort that we have uh, since uh, commencing our roles in Canberra six months ago. So I thank you for the opportunity to address you today. I do look forward to the continuing discussions. And again, it's always a thrill to be here at ACEDA function. Thank you so very much for your time and please enjoy the lunch. Thank you.